first of all like uh, instead of directly going into or pitching into the mule let us see from where the architecture was actually evolved and what are the real time problems in really going for the point to point integration so let us discuss about this this is a software architecture timeline where initially it has started from the batch processing then we have something called client server architecture then we have the entire architecture and slowly we are moving to the uh, service oriented architecture so why people were moving into the service oriented architecture because we want to make sure that the components are loosely coupled there should not be any dependencies between the components and there should be minimal changes across the components whenever we are implementing the new enhancements or new requirement changes so what is the real time problems in really going for the point to point integration so point to point integration is nothing but suppose we all watch ipl or cricket matches so whenever you used to open the crick info website we used to see that score was getting refreshed automatically so that means the website was getting feed from some particular server or from some other system so here there would be a integration required from one system to the another system or else let us say about ndtv website so when you log into the ndtv website there are different categories of information or the news that that was displayed on their website so when you say categories you have something related to the politics or films or sports or even movies movies so you have different categories of information that was shared across the website but in the real time they used to get the data feeds from the different systems so when you get the data feeds from the different system let's say if you are talking about some uh, cricket score then they might be getting the score updates from one of the website like crickinfo Crick Info or cricket next so they might have connected their system to some other website in the background from where we would be getting the data so that is nothing but the point to point integration point to point integration is nothing but where you directly connect to the third party system or third party application so if you go with that approach what are the concerns or what are the problems that are going to happen in point to point integration so the main problems that is going to be happen in the point to point integration or whenever there is a change in the producer's endpoint url your system would be affected because suppose today if i connected to some url so tomorrow when there is a change in the url your system would be affected because of that and if your system was exposing the content only in the xml but the other the system was accepting the content only in the json format then there would be dependency in the data transformation so even though your system support xml because as the third party system doesn't support the xml content you have to transform that message to the some other object or some other format that is understandable by the third party system and if the message type of the application differs so if there is a specific message types like where each system would be differing with their acceptable message types suppose if you directly connect to any application if there is any failure with that application then your application might go down so the problem is if there is a point of failure at the other system even our system our ecosystem will go for the toss so that is the reason why it's a single point of failure so whenever you connect the applications it was more happening at an application to application and the problem is you want to connect to some application but you don't want to convert the object or convert the data that the other application is going to access or accept from the request so because of all these problems we need to go for a enterprise service bus or an integration platform and one more point was all the components or all the connections would be tightly coupled so whenever you couple something whenever you integrate something if you have a point to point integration then always it's going to be a tightly coupled connections between the components so let us go with the introduction of the mule mule is nothing but a running time engine of any point platform so what is the runtime engine we are talking about so it's a lightweight java based enterprise service bus so in short mule is nothing but a runtime engine of any point platform and as the definition itself suggests you that behind the screens it's purely a java application which was mainly developed on spring and integration platform that allows the developers to connect 
connect the applications together quickly and easily so it will actually helps us to connect the applications together quickly and easily even for enabling the exchange of data so what are the different features we have in mule it's first of all it's open and it's light and fast it's a developer friendly it's a cloud ready and they have a lot of connectors available whenever we say it's open it's a open source so it's pretty easy and fast to connect between the applications so it's a developer friendly so there are a lot of documentation available on the mule soft and even there are a lot of blogs and forums which was being uh, run by mule soft organization which will be really helpful when we stuck up with some issue or with an exception or with an error so when we say it's a cloud ready so whenever you want to deploy the applications you have the mule soft cloud hub environment where you can actually deploy all your applications you don't need to pay any hardware cost or infrastructure cost for your project so this is the one real time benefit or one real time future where mule was heading away from the other uh, soa or uh, esb tools and connectors connectors are nothing but the components which will helps us to just configure the applications rather than writing the entire connectivity to a to a particular application so suppose if you don't have a mule esb let's say if you are developing some java application so from your application if you are connecting to any uh, like a workday or facebook or twitter or gmail you have to make sure that you have to completely write your api for entirely connecting the api and getting the services exposed and to call those services now the connector will help you to wrap up the entire underlying layer and it will just ask you few, few configuration parameters through which you can easily connect to the other applications just now we saw like what exactly mule was let us see what we are going to have it in the mule management console so mule management console is nothing but it's a place where we can manage or monitor all the functions of our esb enterprise deployments suppose whenever you are deploying the applications it would be always helpful when you have a common platform or a common console where that would be a single point of contact for managing all the applications or deployments so we would be getting centralized management and monitoring place let me show you that what i am talking about this is the one of the application i am talking about where you can view the console where all the application will be deployed and even you can see the statuses of all the applications that are currently deployed over here so if you click this you can either restart the application or redeploy it okay or you can delete the application or else if you click on the manage application screen there will be a dashboard where all the application all the application stacks would be displayed here can you see that it will show you the detailed timeline or the chart which will say like how many messages were received within a specific timeline even if you want you can view this timeline for entire last week so this is a configurable parameter on the dashboard if you want you can just view it for the last one hour and even we can see the uh, cpu usage and the memory usage these are the few concepts or few reasons how the mule cloud hub console would be really helpful when you deploy all your projects here so here even here in the settings you can select what is the mule runtime environment that you want to deploy and your common properties and here you can specify the logging level of your application so whenever if you deploy some schedule jobs or the poll jobs cron jobs then those would be displayed here if your application has some cron jobs then they would be displayed here so here you can see the application data here you can have the access to the entire log can you see that so we are able to see the entire log console here so this is the real time need of how actually the things were i i mean things were classified and modularized in terms of the deployments as well so in short mule management is called as mmc so here it is nothing but the centralized management or monitoring tool or application which will actually helps you to check the availability or to quickly troubleshoot the access for getting the information about the errors or the exceptions through the logs even they have the concept of clustering as well on the cloud hub now let us see what exactly a mule application is 
Mule application is something which will accept and process messages through a series of message processors play good together in a flow. So whatever you are going to drag the components inside the flow that is nothing but called as a message processor. So in short is nothing but a series of message processors play good together in a flow. Oh, a message can be initiated by an event like when a message can be uh, initiated. So whenever you send a request from the browser or whenever you send a request from a tablet or whenever there is a data that needs to be changed from the database. So these are the possible uh, message uh, initiations that can be happen in the mule flow. So what are these mule applications? Under the hood they are Java based applications using the string framework. So we can create them easily and we can test them visually using the AnyPoint Studio. So AnyPoint Studio is available as a standalone uh, uh, tool or you can use the AnyPoint Studio plugin in the Eclipse. So both of the things were available and we can deploy the mule applications onto the mule runtime. What is a mule runtime? Mule runtime is nothing but it's a just a JVM server where lot of applications were deployed on a single JVM and it will actually decouple the point to point integration by all the applications talking to the service bus or we can say mule runtime instead of directly talking to each other and it will enforce the policies for the API governance. So even actually it will help us to enforce the policies for the API governance as well.